Starvation is stalking Gaza's children. We're talking about kids who have no idea why they can't get a meal. All they know is that they are hungry and that the devastation they see around them hurts. Hurts their tummies, hurts their moms and dads, and they don't feel safe. This is the human side of this war in Gaza. And it's all supported in a new report from the United Nations that's now warning famine is imminent in northern Gaza and that more than 200,000 people are experiencing catastrophic hunger. And it is times like this we always find UNICEF's James Elder. He has made multiple trips to the region since the start of this war, and he's been documenting it for us like this. Heading back into Gaza now. Outrageous how many life-saving supplies are so desperately close to those who need them. Food, water, medicines, life-saving supplies, because we know just across there in the border, children have died of malnutrition. Children have died of dehydration. These are the supplies that so urgently need to get across into the civilians of Gaza. Wow, James joins me now from Rafa right there in the Gaza Strip. A beautiful sunset behind you, but definitely not a beautiful situation, especially what you just showed us, James. What were, I know you talked to those bringing the trucks in. What were on those trucks, and how many do you think were backed up there? Well, Kira, hundreds. There's no doubt hundreds. I mean, everything that the people here so desperately need, food, 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 but also water and medicines. These are these are the absolute essentials that, that are just so desperately lacking here. I mean, where I am here in Rafa, it's hard, when you walk out, it's, it's hard to walk around now, such as the, the density of people, people sleeping on the streets, people in tents. It's cold, it's been raining, uh, and, you know, drones above them all the time. They know drones will bop, bop, drop bombs. There's trauma upon trauma for people here. And, all right, tell us what you have seen with regard to these children and families not being able to get food. And now we're talking about starvation. We're talking about famine. I can't even believe that we had an interview with an Israeli official a couple of weeks ago saying, no, there's, there's no starvation going on. Tell us what you're seeing. I know it's, it's, <laughs> It's something very, that really pierce, pierces one's sort of soul, if you will, Kira, when like today, not once, three, four, five times, women, mums would you know, hold, hold my hand and just ask for anything, for some water, particularly ask, please tell the world what's happening to us. They're, they're afraid that, they're, that their voices are not being heard. I, I think they are, but I don't think the right decisions are being made. There's a fear on the ground, Kira, because of disease and a lack of food, and there's always a constant threat from the skies. You know, speaking of the skies, the U.S. has conducted these airdrops uh, of aid, food into Gaza. Now there's the creation of this temporary port that's being built to bring in food, supplies, whatever is needed, um, you know, by water into the area. Is that making a difference at all? I think that any aid, any aid, of course, but we have to be really clear, otherwise it is a dangerous distraction and then it's making a negative difference. The, you know, the ship, great, but that was the equivalent to around 12 or 13 trucks. And as we say, I, I passed hundreds yesterday. So it remains very clear that if we are going to avoid more children dying, because we now know that children are dying of malnutrition, they are dying of dehydration, horrendous ways for a child to die, the only way is to get that aid through on the roads. And, and it exists. The aid's a few miles from here, Kira. There are many, many other entrance points that the occupying power with a legal responsibility to ensure the population has safety, certainly to ensure there is no famine, we are ready to deliver that aid if given the chance. Just seeing these kids with their bowls uh, waiting there uh, through the, the metal fence to get something to eat, it's just heart-wrenching, especially as a mom, James. As you mentioned, you're there in Rafa. Um, Israel is said to be pr preparing uh, yet another launch um, and another offensive there. Uh, despite international outcry, there's more than a million Palestinians sheltering there in Rafa, uh, trying to flee the fighting. Can they, though? And, and tell me what UNICEF is doing right now to just prepare for all this. 
Yeah, Kira, so I, I, I glanced at those images too, and they're, they, they, they are everywhere here, and, and you're right. I mean, unless you're a, you're a doctor here, there is a great, can be a great sense of futility to have the smallest children just, just ask for anything. And again, to know it's so close. This is the desperation these little children are, are feeling right now. Rafa, as you rightly say, now has more than a million people. Rafa is a city of children. Rafa has twice the population density of New York City, but no high-rises. Everyone is literally on the ground. No, there is nowhere safe. We've seen that. I've never seen in my two decades with the United Nations, I've never seen the devastation that I saw in neighbouring Khan Yunus today. They can't go north. <laughs> Two-thirds or more now, I guess, of homes have been destroyed. There's nothing to return to. Um, so the idea that the people can be moved from A to B, they have moved. They have moved three or four or five times. They have taken the authorities' word to move and keep moving to a safe zone. Now they understand there is nowhere safe. An offensive in Rafa, in this city of children, uh, where now more than half of Gaza's population is hiding, fleeing? No, that's, that's, that's apocalyptic. I, I, I think everyone is terrified, but realistic that this somehow might actually happen. Well, you have power with your interviews, your experience, your, your cell phone, and showing us the images that you've been able to share with us. Please keep doing that for us, James Elder. Uh, we admire what you're doing and, of course, what UNICEF always does in countries and, and crises like this. Appreciate you, James. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.